Hi friends, Sarah here from Grace in My Space. Today we are gonna tackle the bathroom and we are going to be installing pasted wallpaper. I've done a peel and stick wallpaper tutorial before and now we're going to handle the real stuff. done a lot of peel and stick wallpaper installation and I've done a lot of real wallpaper removal because we lived in a few dozen houses growing up 28 every single house we removed wallpaper yes and, and it was miserable usually put some back up <laughs> yes and so mom has installed so much wallpaper mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. like every house probably right yeah yeah, it's a lot of houses, 28 houses, a lot of wallpaper. And so she is the pro. She is going to walk us through how to install pasted wallpaper. And it's a really pretty simple process, right? Yes, it's very simple. It's not very different than peel and stick. Okay, just an added step of pasting, booking, and here we go. Here we go. <laughs> the supplies you're going to need are a really basic a pair of scissors, wallpaper paste, a wallpaper smoother thingy and a blade. You'll also need a paintbrush to apply your paste or a roller also works and then a level with pencil to make sure your first piece is going to be a great guide for the rest of them. You will also need a wet sponge. After you've gathered all of your materials lay out a large work service protect it so that if you get any paste on a countertop or on a floor or on a table you can easily clean it up afterwards. Your first step is going to be removing anything that's already hanging on the wall, taking down light fixtures, patching any holes so that you have a smooth and flush work surface on your walls, and then if necessary, wipe down your walls to clean them well, and make sure you have a clean surface so that your paste can adhere properly. All right, first step, just like with the peel and stick wallpaper, is we're going to measure the width first of our wallpaper roll, mark it on the wall, and then we're gonna do a level line, and this level line is gonna be our guide for everything else. So you don't wanna use the ceiling as your level, you don't wanna use the adjacent wall as your level because those will have settled over time, they might have bows in them, and your wallpaper will not be straight. So we're gonna create our level line, and then we're gonna install the first panel. So our first step, we're going to measure out the length we need for that panel, cut it off the roll, and then we're going to paste that piece. Where I like to get extra is over at the edges, because yep. they dry first and you need the seams to stay on. So it looks like you were spreading it out pretty well, like there was no... No lines. Heavy build up of lines. Right. Okay. Okay, we're going to do this. Now what does that do? This is called booking. It's called booking. And what does it do for the paper? It just gives it time to, for the paste to kind of activate without it allowing it to dry out. So it's it's keeping this fresh while you're repasting the rest of that. Do you have any wallpaper tips for transitioning from one wall to the next in a corner? Don't do it. No. <laughs> Transitioning around the corner was always a nightmare and... <laughs> this is a really encouraging tutorial. <laughs> you can do it. You can, I always did. And it, it, it ended up working out, but I won't, I cannot honestly in all good faith say that it was easy. <laughs> now, does it matter if we get any paste on the face of the wallpaper? If you do, I like to wipe it off. So we let this sit for how long? Oh, I'm gonna say a minute. I know, I, I know that a lot of times they say to let it sit longer on the directions, but honestly, I've never listened to that and I've never had wallpaper fall off, so I think it's okay. So this is what it looks like being booked and now we are going to install it. One of the things to pay attention to is making sure you're not installing it upside down and also, 
look at your pattern, I have birds on this pattern, and so I'm gonna be sure to kind of install it where the bird's head is not cut off right at the top and just kind of paying attention to some of those details. And we pop it up. This is a lot messier than a peel and stick. Lining it up on our level line. Okay, we're gonna need to come this way because look what's happening, unless you wanna cut that corner, but I don't, I would choose not to cut the corner. And the reason that's happening where you probably don't get that with peel and stick is because once you put the paste on your paper stretches. <laughs> the paper stretches. <laughs> what? Yeah, get all your bubbles out first before you make any cuts. So the bubble situation is a lot easier to get out with this than the peel and stick that I've used before. Oh, it is? Oh yeah, that's way easier. Peel and stick bubbles are very hard to get out. Oh, I always like to keep making sure that the edges are sticking. All right, go sideways and get that corner seam kind of tight. Sorry? Yeah, like just to get that push that corner into the corner before we cut it. You overlap slightly, right? No, I butt it up. Well, what if it moves? It shouldn't move once it's pasted. If you overlap, the paper won't stick to the paper. Especially because it's got a shiny finish, you really have to butt it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Otherwise, you're gonna be going back with adhesive and sealing all your seams. Peel and stick is the way to go. <laughs> Creating a little X in the paper to pull the wires through so that we can lay the paper flush on the wall and then we can cut around it. That's the hope. <laughs> Every time I wipe it, it makes my seam move over. Yes, it does because the paper stretches. Because the paper stretches. <laughs> Even though we've run into some challenges on this project, installing pasted wallpaper is pretty straightforward. You measure, you cut to length, you paste your wallpaper, book it, line it up butted next to the previous panel, making sure that your seams are tight, smooth all the air bubbles out, and then cut off any excess. Using a wet sponge is a great option to get all the air bubbles out, as well as using a wallpaper smoother for some of those tight spaces. Momo, real time. Oh, this miserable cutting experience. She's vowing to never do this again. Never. Oh, so bad. Oh, what'd you do? Push it up. It's you fine. It's fixable. Dumb wallpaper. <laughs> Look at that. She's pretty. It looks pretty. I'll never do it again. Never. Hold on. Okay, so as a first time pasted paper installer, I like peel and stick better. A lot better. I don't have experience with peel and stick because they didn't have that when I was doing most of my houses. Um, it was called contact paper. <laughs> kind of what peel and stick is. So, thicker. Thicker than yeah. contact paper. Okay. But I will say that for hanging the actual wallpaper, the process is the same for peel and stick, pasted, pre-pasted. You make sure you have it level. You make sure that you are keeping it level. You make sure you match the seams up. You make sure and just trim everything you need to around any obstacles like a light fixture. The difference with pasted paper comes in the way that you have to apply it. So with peel and stick, you would overlap seams because it could eventually separate and then your overlap will accommodate that so you don't have a gap. With pasted paper, we had to line it up meticulously. Butt it up. And butt it up instead of overlap it, which was hard. It was real hard. <laughs> it was really hard to do. Another difference with peel and stick and pasted paper, peel and stick does not expand and contract. So when we were applying the paste to this paper, it made it stretch out. So our measurements were all kind of like a wash in the end. 
because it would stretch a little bit. And every time we moved it and tried to align it, it would stretch a little bit more. And then once it's dry, hopefully, right? It's going to be like where it is. Yeah. It's not going to move. We're hoping it's not going to shrink too much. <laughs> I think it's going to be good. And then the other big difference was as we were cutting all the edges and around here, the paper was tearing very, very easily. And perhaps that is the quality of this paper as opposed to a more expensive paper. I think the biggest thing is because you're cutting wet paper, it's so important to have a good blade each cut. So I, when I've done all of mine, every single piece of paper I put up, I used a fresh knife, a fresh blade. So that it keeps it good and sharp. And mine were always just the breakaways. So it made it easy to do. Um, but I think that's the best, most important thing, cutting wet paper. Sharp knife. I did not have that. <laughs> but it's up and it's beautiful and it's never leaving. <laughs> We've got a long way to go in the bathroom, but this wallpaper is a game changer, even though it was not fun to put up. Got to get new bulbs for this fixture. I have mirrors to put up. We have all kinds of things we're gonna do. We're gonna change the color of the vanity. All this red is going away. And so make sure and stay tuned for my next video where I'm gonna be talking about specifically how to transform a bathroom on a very, very strict budget. I hope that if you decide to do pasted wallpaper, you did learn some things in this video as well and you feel confident to be able to tackle it. Have patience, that's all I can say. Thanks for watching as we continue to renovate here at the Haven Cottage. Make sure and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and we will see you next time.